Sabbath, everyone. Good Sabbath. Good Sabbath. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. <coughs> and after a long, long week of work, it is uh, very, very pleasant to be able to rest and to be able to also come and be regenerated spiritually and spending time with my spiritual family. And I'm going to ask you to please stand up and together we can praise the Lord.
why we live. Amen. And there's only one reason why we praise. And a lot, a lot of times I think that it might be, we might see it as, or not us, but other people might see it as selfish. But God wants all the glory. <clears throat> he deserves all the glory. Yeah. God wants all honor, all praise to Himself. Everything that He has made, He has made because of Him. Everything that we see, everything that we have, it's because of Him. He deserves everything. If somebody has a problem with that, talk to God, don't talk to me. But I think a lot of times, it is hard for us to understand that. That everything we do, that everything we should do, it should be for the honor and the glory of God. Because He deserves it. And we're going to glorify that name today. And I thank you for joining me in praising that name. Amen. Amen.
Sabbath again. Good Sabbath. Good Sabbath. I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles to Joshua. <clears throat> Let me know when you... Amen. Amen. And I have a watch for me because I have to learn how to, not how to keep time, but how to keep time when I'm speaking. <laughs> I thank the Lord for this opportunity um, for the last couple of months. I've been taking an Old Testament survey class, and it's, it's helped me a great, great amount. Uh, I think that a lot of times, Pastor Dave always says, you know, we read a passage, we read a verse so many times, but we just, just skim over it. We, we don't really extract the message. It doesn't really speak to us unless, by the Spirit of God, He leads us into that moment, and He leads us into that verse, and then we can find, we can find something in it that, that helps us. And today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> to share with you some of what I was able to learn from it. And I, I titled this message, God's Challenge. And that's not the whole title because the, I think if it was up to me, it would be God's Challenge to Joshua, God's Challenge to Israel, God's Challenge to me, God's Challenge to you, and God's Challenge to everybody who has that relationship with it. That should have been the title of the message, but that was too long. <laughs> so. We're starting here at, um, in Joshua, and it, um, God appears to Joshua after 30 days of mourning for Moses, because Moses was now dead, and you can find that in Deuteronomy 34, 8, we're not going to read it. And the Lord challenged Joshua, his new appointed leader, three times to be strong and courageous in order to lead the people and accomplish all that God had promised the people. And now we're going to read from Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 and 9. It says, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the... Sorry, I went to chapter... Let me go to chapter... I mean, verse 6. He said, be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to you, to their fathers, to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The God is telling Joshua, you know what? The people have been in the desert for how many years now? 40 years. Now the trip from Egypt to the Promised Land was supposed to take how long? Nine days. One year? No, it was not one year. It was a couple of months, right? Because it was, it was a large amount of people. But they had taken 40 years. And a whole generation had been wiped out because of their unbelief in God's Word. Now, the generation that was going to come into the land was a new generation. A new generation. God was starting fresh. Because you know what? He gave the, the opportunity to, these, to their parents, but they did not trust in God's word. So God said, you know, because you guys, because you didn't believe the promises that I had given you, and that I was going to make a way for you to be able to defeat the inhabitants of this land, you will not go into the land. And the only two people that were able to go into this land of that generation that perished in, in, in the desert was Caleb and Joshua. Now Moses had died and Joshua was the leader that God had chosen for himself to lead the people. And God is saying, before you cross into the land, there are things that you need to know. There are things that I want to make sure that you know. Because when you go into this land, it's not going to be easy. There are going to be times where you're going to come with uncertainty and there are challenges that you're going to have but you need to understand that I am with you and I, I can empower you and I can be, I'm going to be with you and I'm going to give you the success that you need to be able to accomplish everything, everything that I have promised. I'm going to put this down because it's in my way. Hope you don't mind. Now the first thing 
that God says is, Joshua needed to be courageous, be strong and courageous, because he needed to focus on the task that lay before him. And that is to lead the people into the land. That was the task that God was giving Joshua. He had to be the leader. He had to be the first one. He had to be the one telling the people what to do because God was going to be communicating to Joshua. And Joshua was the one that was going to be responsible for these people to cross the Jordan and to go into the land and to start physical battles against the inhabitants of the land. Now, to us, it might be simple. Okay, you cross the Jordan and you start pitching tents. No, it's not that easy. You cross the Jordan and you start what? You start battling for the land because the land was inhabited. It wasn't empty. There were people that had lived there for centuries. And these people were not going to give their land up. Just, okay, so God told you, okay, here you go. We're going to move somewhere. No, it wasn't that simple. I think a lot of times when we read these verses, we're like, okay, they crossed over. That's no. God said, you're going to need to be strong and courageous to stay on that task. Because when you cross over that Jordan and those inhabitants come and they battle against you, I don't want you to turn around and say, you know what, it was much easier in the desert. At least there, all we had to start with was the heat and trying to find food. No. God said, you're going to have to stay focused. You're going to have to stay on the task that I am setting before you. And when those inhabitants of the land come and battle against you, you need to be certain that I have promised victory over them. Now, for us, what is that lesson? In our time, how many times do we know the task that God has put in front of us? We know God has given us a task to do, something to accomplish. But at times, when that task is so certain in us, how many things come up in our life that we think need our immediate attention? And when those things come in our life, we do what? We divert our attention from the task set by God to, to tend to these things that apparently to us are very important. And those are the moments that, you know what, God tells you, you need to be strong and courageous. Because of many of the times when these things come into our life, be whatever issues it is, because we all have different issues in our life. When those things pop up into our life, we tend to disregard God's message. We tend to disregard God's word. We tend to push God aside and get into this survival mode. I have to survive because if I don't do this, if I don't take care of this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose a job or I'm going to lose all these things. And we don't, we don't realize that God is the one that has possession of everything. We don't realize that everything that we have, and that's what I was saying is, belongs to God. And God deserves the glory. And God deserves the praise. And you know what? If I take care of what God wants me to do, He's going to take care of me. That's what God was telling you. Telling Joshua, when you go into this land, you need to stay on task. You need to know what you need to do. Because you know what, Joshua, when you go in there, many people are going to tell you, you know what, Joshua, we don't need to continue this battle. We have so much land now. Why don't we just make you a big, nice house here, right? And then you and your family can live. You know what? This is enough land for all of us to fit. And it might have been simple to say, okay, Joshua, you know what? We're going to conquer this much land because up in the hills we have giants and down there we have even, you know, fast people and they have chariots. We should just stay here. It's safe for here. A lot of times that's the way we think in our spiritual life. We've gone so far. But you know what? The rest of the way looks much harder. The rest of the way, in order to accomplish the, thing, the things that God wants me to do, I have to do what? I have to change certain things in my life. And in reality, they're, they're so hard. I can't do it. I tried once and it didn't happen. So you know what? Instead of going that extra step, I choose to do what? divert from the task that God has placed in my life. Many times that happens in our spiritual family. God has given us a task in the church. And God is telling you, because you know what? Paul says that he made some what? Teachers. He's made some prophets. He's made what? He's made each one of us something. He's given us a ministry. He's given us a task to accomplish in our spiritual family. But many times, and it's not easy. 
It's not. You have to be disciplined. You have to love the Lord. You have to make time for it. You have to be willing to do it. It's, it's not easy. You know that when you, and I was praying today, when you want to serve God, there are so many things that come. Throughout the week, I've had so many issues. So many things that, you know what, the sin is just it's knocking at me. It's trying to uh, make me fall because I have a task to do this week. And that is, I have to go and I have to share the word with my brothers. And throughout the week, I've had such a battle. And, and, and I've, I've, I've asked God, please help me. Please help me. Please strengthen me. Give me the focus that I need. Because when you want to do something for God, everybody, it seems like everybody else wants to deter you from doing that. Amen. They want to do whatever it is <clears throat> to not make you want to continue in that path. We all have a task in this church that we are in. God has given each of us a task. And many times we put that task aside to attend to things that maybe are not bad, but you know what? It should be a high priority like what God has given us. Joshua was leading about 2 million people. And there are many people that say it was less, it was more. But he was leading. And these people were not people that were so easy. And I'm sure these people were people that, you know, they were, they were the kind of people that grumble and they complain. And the kind of people that didn't want to go into battle because they didn't have the experience because the whole old generation had died out. So Joshua had a very hard task in front of him. He didn't just have to fight against the inhabitants of that land. He had to also what? Sometimes argue with the people that were following him. It was not an easy task. And that's what God was telling him. Joshua, you need to be strong and courageous because the task that lays ahead of you, it's not an easy task. It's not an impossible task. Because you know what? I have promised you the land. And you need to believe in the promise that I've made. In our life, <coughs> brothers and sisters, God has given us a task. And I'm not here to judge you, and I'm not here to criticize you, because you know what? I examine myself first. And I've found that I've left the task that God has given me many times. I've turned my life to other places, other directions. I've started new projects that I shouldn't have. And God is telling me, when I was studying this, God was telling me, Saul, Saul, you need to get back. You need to get back to where I started you. The task that I gave you, that's where you need to be. And a lot of times it's hard because the things that we want to do are good. And one of the battles that I'm going to share with you is <clears throat> that I started playing the guitar when I was very young. I was 18 years old. And I love playing. I'm not that good. I think God has blessed me. But at times I think that for me the word, it, 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 God has blessed me to understand his word and to be able to explain somewhat clear the message that he has. But between these two things, a lot of times I tend to choose the instrument. And, and at times it's like, you know what, I love playing the guitar, I love studying, and, and just what do I do? And I've had that battle, and I'm not saying it's not bad. Worshiping is not bad. But I think that God has given us something that we must do. We must understand that this is what God has, has uh, given us, the ministry. And even though you might like playing, or even though you might like doing other things, but this is what God has given you. And this is what you need to concentrate on. This is what you need to put your time into. This is what God is going to truly bless if you do it, because He has given it to you. And like I said, I love playing the guitar, but many times I've asked, and I've, I've asked my wife, right, what do you think? What do you think God is, 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 do you think God gets mad when I do that? Because I kind of take time away from the Word? Or do you think God is, 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 is happy because I do it? But believe me, I, I, now that I'm studying and I'm, I'm doing more things, I think this is what God wants me to do. I'm not saying I'm not going to do that anymore, but I think that this is what God is calling me. And in our spiritual life, it's the same way. <clears throat> in our spiritual life, in our home life, okay, we have so many ministries that God wants us to do. God wants us to do so many things. And a lot of times in our lives, because of all the business that happens in our lives, we turn away and we, we tend to other things that God doesn't want us to do. God told Joshua, be strong and courageous. <clears throat> Stay on task. Stay on task. Because there are going to be many opportunities 
to get away from what God has given you. Mm. But God told Joshua, you need to remember to stay on task. The second thing is Joshua needed to be courageous, strong and courageous, because he needed to observe God's word. Joshua needed to observe God's word. God said, the word that I gave Moses, okay, that word, that same word, it hasn't changed. Only because Moses is dead doesn't mean that, Joshua, you're going to get a whole new set of commandments. It doesn't mean that because Moses is dead, all those things that I spoke to Moses is outdated. Now, Joshua, we're going to start fresh with you. And because the people couldn't follow those laws, Joshua, you know what? I'm going to make it easier for the new generation. That's not how it happened. God said, you know what? Those commandments and all the words that Moses recorded while he was in the desert, they still hold true now to you and to the new generation. And just like I expected Moses to follow it, and just like I expected the old generation to follow it, the same is for you. Because God's word never changes. God, God doesn't make up his mind to do one thing today, and then make up his mind later and say, you know what, I'm going to just change it. Because, you know, I think it's, it's, I made it too hard for you guys. He doesn't do that. I think there are many people nowadays that, that believe very differently than what God recorded His Word in the Bible. There are many people that say, you know what, yeah, God said that, but He really meant this. Or, or that might mean this to you, but it means this to me. No. God hasn't changed. God's standards of holiness, of morality, God's standards have stayed the same since He gave them to us. Since they were recorded by Moses, they have not changed. Culture changes, and and, and, and it's, it's very it's very um, funny to realize the fact that culture changes. I'm from a different culture. Well, I've been Americanized now, but there are certain things that I do that when you guys see them, you might be like, "Oh, uh, it doesn't," you know. And you guys do some things, and I'm like, "Okay, uh, it doesn't 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 go too well with me. It's not appealing." But those are the changes that what mankind has. But when it comes down to holiness and morality, God is, God is the standard. God is the standard. And it's one thing that I, I realized. Joshua, did, this is, Joshua not only needs to read God's word, okay, because remember the word of God was in the book that Moses had, had, had recorded. He, it had to be on his what? Lips. It had to be in his Mind, because he had to what? Meditate. And he had to what? Live it out. Because it says, first it says, On his lips shall not depart from your mouth. In his mind, meditate it day and night. And he had to live it out because he had to observe it to do according to all that it is written. Many times as Christians, okay? Many times as Christians, we believe, okay, as long as I read the Bible, that's good enough. That's the quota that God wants me to do. I'm going to sit down for a couple minutes and I'm going to read the Bible. No. God said, you know what? In order for you to be successful, Joshua, you need to do three things with my word. They need to be in your mouth. Meaning what? You need to speak constantly of the word. You need to teach the word constantly. You need to share the word constantly. Every chance that you get when you come in contact with somebody and you get the opportunity, or you know what, you have to try to make an opportunity, you have to what? Speak. It has to be constantly in your mouth. You have to what? It has to be constantly in your mind. You know what, it's nice to think about a lot of dreams, but how often do you realize, you know what, you spend all day thinking about God's word? It doesn't ever happen, right? I spent, man, I spent, actually before I went on vacation, the only thing I could think about was going on vacation. And I spent like two weeks and trying to prepare, you know, what are we going to take, what are we going to do when we're there, there's so many things to do. We're going to go shopping, we're going to go to the boardwalk, we're going to go to the beach, and we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and that's all I was thinking about. But I never caught myself saying, you know what, I've thought about God's word the whole day today, and nothing else has been in my mind. God told Joshua, you need to 
Think about it. Meditate. You know what? When you don't understand a passage, you need to what? Meditate on it. You need to ask God, what do you want me to understand from your word? What is this passage? What should this passage mean to me? What do you want me to learn from it? And he said, you also need to do what? Live it out. You need to live it out. When you understand what God wants you to do, you need to just do what? Go ahead and start doing it. Isn't it, isn't it very hard for you to profess to people that you are a believer and that you believe everything that's in Scripture? Don't they start making fun of you? Don't they start trying to provoke you? Don't they start trying to do things to irritate you? And all of a sudden it seems like, you know what, you've made a couple enemies because you say, you know what, I believe in the Word of God and I believe that everything that's there is true. God told Joshua, you need to be strong and courageous. You need to have the word in your mouth, in your mind, and you have to live it out loud. Because you know, Joshua, these people are going to get tired of all the commandments that I've given them. Because what? The previous generation did it, and there's going to be a couple of them, not all of them, but there's going to be a couple of them that are going to try to rebel against what I said. And when these people come and start complaining to you about, oh, do you really want us to do this? Do you think God really wanted that from us? You know? There wouldn't be people saying, you know what, Joshua, yeah, that's what the book says. But, you know, Moses was an old timer, and he didn't know that this was going to happen. If he would have understood, if he would have realized that things were going to change, I'm sure he would have written it down differently, because that those are what are opinions, right? Those are what the conclusions that many of us come up with. You know what, if God would have known that in 2012 these things were happening, he would have written things down differently. No. Joshua needed, needed to stay true to that word because the success that God was giving him <clears throat> depended on obeying that word. That's right. he, he didn't have permission to go to divert either to the left or to the right. He had to stay what? Straight in that path that God had already assigned for him. That path was to be followed. It wasn't to be altered. It wasn't to be modified, thinking that, okay, we'll make it better, you know? No, you have to stay straight. Now, God's word lived out loud does not I mean God's word lived out loud guarantees our success. It doesn't promise a life without problems. Okay, so I'm not saying you will have no problems. I'm not saying you will have no struggles. I'm not saying you won't have any challenges. But what I'm saying is that it ensures a life in which we are able to deal with anything because it, it will take full advantage of God's presence and His promise. When you live God's Word out loud, when you stay true to God's Word, believe me, the first thing you are going to encounter are challenges. The first thing you are going to encounter are people that you know don't agree with you. The first thing you are going to encounter is somebody that is trying to throw you away from what you want to live. If somebody tells you, you know what, when you start living God's word out loud, everything is going to be great. Do not believe them. But what God said is what? He's going to be with us. He's going to guarantee that if we live His word out loud, we will be successful in life. Even though we have challenges, even though we have struggles, even though we have battles, you know what? There is success guaranteed. Because God will say, you know what, this is what you need to do, Joshua in order to be successful in the task that I've laid ahead of you. Now the third thing, Joshua needs to be courageous because he must always remember God's presence. Joshua needed to remember that God was with him. When things got bad, <clears throat> when people started complaining, when the enemies were just ready to attack him, when things were going wrong and it seemed like everything was going wrong, Joshua needed to remember, you know what, even though everything looks uncertain, God is still with me. And God can make a way, even though I don't see a way, God can make a way. And He can make it possible when everything looks impossible. Joshua needed to realize that God's promises were true. He needed to realize also that when you rebel against God, the consequences are not good. 
then when you don't trust God's promises, the consequences are not good. Because the generation that did not trust God's promise, that doubted His word, that doubted His promises, that doubted what He wanted to accomplish through them, died out in the desert. So Joshua needed to realize that when God said He's going to do something, He's really going to do it. It doesn't matter what my neighbor says. It doesn't matter what people say. If God said He's going to do it, He's going to do it. He's going to find a way. Maybe I don't have the resources. Maybe I lack potential. But you know what? God doesn't. In our lives, brothers and sisters, there are many things that happen in our lives that will push us to not believe that God's presence is with us. There are troubles that come into our lives that, you know what, that you might doubt. Maybe God is not with me. Maybe God is not with me. Maybe God has abandoned me. Maybe God doesn't care about me anymore because all these troubles that are happening in my life. And those times are when you need to realize, you know what, God is here. God is always with me. Maybe I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing, but God is here. And I need to claim His name, and I need to claim the promises, and I need to make adjustments and realize maybe I've, I've gone off the path that God wants me to be in. And that's why these things are not going the way they should be. That's why I can't find success in my life. Because I've strayed away from what God wants me to do. But God is always with us. <clears throat> Joshua's success depended only, not only on his ability to keep God's word, it depended on God's presence. And this, this is why I made this observation. Many times we believe, okay, if I follow all the things that are in the Bible, I'm going to, I'm guaranteed success. No. You have to have a relationship with God. You have to know God's presence in your life. Because there are many people that mechanically just, you know what, do all these things. But they don't know God. They know what they must do. But they don't have an intimate relationship with God. They don't know God's voice. They don't know God's love. They've never felt His presence in their life. But yet they're following all these rules, and they know the Ten Commandments, and they know all these other rules, but that is just what? Empty religion. You have to follow the Word, but you have to know the God that wants you to follow those words. You have to know His presence. You have to realize that just the Word itself, okay, is not important. But you have to establish a relationship with God. In the New Testament, Jesus said, you know what? I never knew you. You might have done a lot of things for me. You might have done a lot of things in my name. You might have known all the words that I said. But you know what? You and I never connected. So Joshua needed to follow God's laws. But he also needed to what? Know that God's presence was important. Just the same way with us. Only because you come to church doesn't mean that you know God. Only because you read the Bible doesn't mean you know God. You have to, you have to, you have to ask Him to reveal Himself to you. Now reading the Word and doing all these things are part of that process to be able to know God more and more each day. More intimacy with Him. We need to do these things. We need to be strong and courageous because the world, the world is doing away with everything that has to do with God. The world is pushing everything that has to do with holiness and morality, everything that has to do with good, everything that has to do with glorifying God. The world is just throwing it away, left and right. And they're trying to implement things that gratify the body and gratify humanity and all these things are not according to God. The Bible highlights that Israel's conquest and division of the land did not come about because of Israel's military strength. Many times we think, you know what, we're going to be successful because I have all these abilities. No. Many times probably Israel thought, you know what, we conquered all this because we have so many men. We have so much military power. No. The Bible says it wasn't because of their ability in military battle that they accomplished the conquest. Rather, they happened because God's faithfulness, according to Joshua 21, 43-45, the Lord kept His promise. To the people of Israel. That's why they accomplished. The, to conquer the land. Just like he has promised. And he promised them. He has promised us. But our success depends, depends also. 
on the things that God told the people of Israel they must do. Now another thing, and I'm going to go a little quick, that came into my mind. Why does God allow his people to face the challenge? Wouldn't it be easy for him just to do everything and say, here you go, it's done. Just go in, you know what, I've already taken care of everything, go ahead, everything's set up for you. It would have been easy for him to say, you know what, all that happens is I wiped them out already, everything, you know what, the houses are clean, everything is just ready for you to go and live in there, Israelites. Because many times we think, you know what, if, if God did everything for us, then I wouldn't have to fail. He wouldn't have to see me fail. He wouldn't have to see me cry. Then I wouldn't have to come back and ask for forgiveness. Then I wouldn't have to do all these things that when I fail in the challenges. God, can't you just take away all the challenges and make it so much easier? But God gives us challenges for a reason. And this is the answer to what I came up with with that question. This is why I believe God lets us face challenges. God desires to reveal himself to us. And to the world, through the mighty acts he executes through his people, through you and through me. He did it with the patriarchs. He did it with the people of Israel. He did it with the New Testament church. And I believe he desires to do the same through us. Many times we just think about ourselves. <coughs> Many times we are very selfish. You know what? If God would just do this for me, then I wouldn't have to go through all the struggle. Wait a minute. But if God didn't do great things through you, how would the people out there realize that your God is true? If God wouldn't do miracles in your life, how would the people out there, how would you be able to testify to them? Because the way we testify is, I know God is true because He did this in me. I know God is true because He's done great things in my life. But if there were no challenges in our life, how would we be able to testify? How would we be able to say, you know what, it's the Lord's doing in my life, and that's why I am who I am. Many times, challenges are not easy. They're not. They're not comfortable. But even though knowing that, you know what, God wants to, God's challenges have a purpose in our life, we can still ask ourselves, why? Isn't there another way that God can do it? But as a child of God, this is what I've come up Challenges drive us forward. Without challenges, we have little or no reason to try to improve ourselves. Imagine this. If there were no challenges in our life, we would stay the same always. Now, I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago. I, and 10 years ago, I was very different than what I was 10 years before that. But all this has come up because of what? The changes in my life have come up because of the challenges in my life. If there were no challenges, we would have stayed the same always. It's the same in, spirit, in our spiritual battle, in our spiritual life. If there are no spiritual battles, there is no reason for us, okay? There is no reason for us to grow. There is no reason for us to move forward. There is no reason, reason for us to fight against the things. One of the things that we think is, you know what, life's challenges are so difficult. And I wrote here, yes, life's challenges can make things quite difficult at times. But these difficulties force us to try harder. They force us to become inventive, resourceful. They force us to look for solutions. And as godly people, they should lead us to a total dependence on God and His Word. Amen. It is out of the challenges we overcome with God's help, that some of our greatest moments in life will arise. If there were no challenges, you would probably not be able to witness to the power of God acting in your life. You would go through life thinking that everything, everything that happened in life was a, was a, a matter of chance or luck or all these things. You know what? The challenges that God places in your life or so he can manifest himself in them, and you can say, God, thank you very much for being with me, for allowing these things to happen, and for letting me be successful in the challenges. And then the people that are, live around you, or the people that work with you, or the, your family members that don't believe in God, you can say, it was God that did this, and I give 100% to God. I give him 
all the credit because you know what? I can never do it. I give him all the credit because I wasn't able to do it by myself. God, God wants us, okay, to acknowledge the fact that the challenges in our life are not to make us fail. But it's an opportunity for us to give him the opportunity to work in our lives for the glory of his, of his name, for his honor, and to the praise of his name. And that's what I say. Many times we think about us. No, it's all about God. It's not all about us. It's all about God. He gets the credit. He gets the honor. He gets the glory. God said, Joshua, the task. Remember it. Don't forget it. Be strong and courageous. You have to stay on task. Be strong and courageous. You have to stay into the Word. The Word has to be in your lips. The Word has to be in your mind. The Word has to be lived out loud. And Joshua, be strong and courageous because you need to always remember that I am with you. Wherever you go, I am there. There's a task that you have. It's a task that I have. We all have the Word of God. And we all have God's presence. Now before this is a conclusion, and Israel's success was dependent on their commitment to God's word and a total dependence on Him. In the midst of the turmoil of our world, many times we as Christians forget the awesome promises God wants to fulfill in our lives. There are promises in your life that God has made, and He wants to fulfill those promises. And how we have been called to accomplish great deeds for the name of the Lord. There are promises that have to be <coughs> fulfilled, and when those promises are fulfilled, they are going to be the result of great accomplishments for the name of the Lord. And there are times that we fail. There are times that we fail. But you know what? There are many times that we are not trying at all. We just gave up on the task. We fail once, and that's it. God, I know that's the, I, I, I give up on it. No, we have to stay strong and courageous. And like the people of Israel, our success depends on our commitment to God and our total reliance on His power. If we stay true to God, He will stay true to us and execute mighty deeds through us. God's challenge wasn't just for Joshua and Israel. It was also, and it is also for you and for me. So the conclusion to this message is this. God is challenging you today to fully commit yourself to Him and to totally rely on His power. Because there are great things that need to be accomplished. Yeah. You and I have been chosen for those. Amen. Glory to His name. Amen. Amen.